Hey guys, how you guys doing? It's April 1st, 2019. Hoping you're having a wonderful day, a blessed day indeed. A couple things I wanted to talk about, uh, updates uh, that I've seen been going on uh, throughout the day. First, let's talk about Israel and Gaza, all right? Um, whew, man, has this, been, has this been something? Very interesting situation, very troubling situation over the past week uh, in that theater, that, that area of the world. Uh, we had, okay, so a little breakdown, a little breakdown. Uh, you probably know most of this information, but I'm going to go through it real quick, all right? An Egyptian mediation team uh, went into uh, the area. They went to Gaza, they went to Israel, trying to broker some sort of ceasefire deal between the two, you know? We've seen rocket barrages, we've seen um, IED balloons being launched, we've seen airstrikes happen, we've seen different military outposts being hit, um, you know, Israel's hit a lot of empty buildings, as they always do, um, which has a lot of Israeli people very angry because it has no effect. You know, you keep on hitting these empty buildings, it's not going to stop anybody, you know. Uh, but basically, all this has been going on. Tensions have risen. Um, they had the Million March this past Saturday, uh, and, uh, you know, both sides were pretty... They, you know, stuck back a little bit, which was really good. We still saw some deaths, which was awful. Um, but it wasn't the bloodbath that a lot of people thought it was going to be. People uh, held a certain level of restraint on both sides, you know. And it had a lot of people thinking, oh, this is a very good thing. A ceasefire deal looks like it's going to be brokered. Um, and that's what we've been thinking for the past 24 to 36 hours, that a ceasefire deal... Uh, was going to occur, that it was going to happen, that it was going to stick. Um, we had reports that on the Israeli side, they had agreed to all these concessions. We had uh, on the uh, Hamas-Gaza side that uh, that they had agreed to the ceasefire as well. All right? uh, but over the past couple hours, what we're hearing is several things. All right? Let me just read a few tweets from you from... Uh, the Intel cat, which he's the only he's only the Intel cat for today, because uh, it's April Fool's Day. Um, he's Intel uh, Doge. Um, Israeli talks with Hamas leaders and other faction leaders appear to be breaking down. Hamas is threatening that if Israeli leaders do don't agree to concessions, they'll launch rockets and they'll resume resume hostilities. Now they're saying this because um, while they have stated before, and Palestinian media has stated before that Israel did agree to these concessions, apparently they aren't uh, adhering to them as fast as uh, Hamas and Gaza would like, you know? Uh, like the whole increasing the range of uh, their fishing vessels to, uh, what, 15 kilometers or something like that. Um, apparently Israel isn't adhering to these concessions, and so Hamas and Gaza are getting impatient, okay? That's, that's what we're hearing so far. What we're also hearing is reports that the Egyptian delegation, the mediation team that has gone in, uh, went to Israel and then back to Hamas for one final go to try to try to get this ceasefire deal to occur, to happen. But there are reports that the Egyptian mediation team uh, may come out within the next 24 to 48 hours and state that the ceasefire deal did not happen, that they're pulling out, that they're done, they've washed their hands of this situation. Um, so as of right now, what we're hearing is um, not much on the Israeli side. We're really not hearing that much on the Israeli side right now. But on the Hamas-Gaza side, we're hearing that uh, if these concessions aren't implemented like Hamas and Gaza wants, that they're going to uh, increase their rocket barrages and even... Uh, even uh, hit Tel Aviv, all right? We've also heard, uh, now this is just rumored intel, we've heard uh, that Iran has given the green light to different factions within Gaza to hit Israel hard. Now, the uh, confusion night unit that goes to the border from the, the uh, Gaza side and uh, usually, usually launches those IED balloons, just causes all kinds of mayhem for people on the border uh, with Israel and Gaza. Uh, they're going back tonight. They sh they're probably there uh, right now as I speak, or if they're not right there right now, they're going to be there very soon. Uh, so, as of right now, we'll probably know within the next 24 hours if uh, there's a ceasefire or if this is really actually collapsing. Because right now it looks like it's going to collapse. doesn't look like there's any progression towards a ceasefire. But, I, I mean, I don't have all the answers. All I know is what I can report to you guys and what I can report is we will probably know in the next 24 hours, but it is not looking good between Israel and Gaza. Just when we thought things were looking good, 
it's not looking good, all right? Another thing I wanted to talk about was this F-35 crisis, all right? This F-35 cri uh, crisis is between U.S. and Turkey, and I've been talking about this for the past year and a half on my channel, all right, is that Turkey is not really a NATO ally. I know uh, in word they are, but not in face. Taken by face value, they're becoming more of an ally with Iran and Russia and China than they are the U.S. and the West, okay? Um, when Erdogan came to power, he had that fake coup. What was that, about three years ago now? Uh, he staged that fake coup to grab more power. Um, they started getting closer uh, to Iran, closer to Syria, closer uh, to Russia uh, than the United States of America. And one of the biggest things about this whole F-35 deal was they were supposed to be shipped, these F-35s. Well, then Turkey made a deal with Russia to buy S-400 uh, hardware. And the U.S. is like, whoa, mm -mm, what are you doing? You can't be buying these S-400s, all right? You're going to do business with us or you're not going to do business with us, all right? Um, it's us uh, by ourselves or it's you and Russia. You know, you got to take your side. And so it looks like at this point, Turkey has a decision to make. You know, are they going to go with the S-400s or are they going to try to scrap or salvage this whole uh, this whole F-35 deal with the United States of America? Now, uh, at this point, it, everyone should be asking themselves, why is Turkey in NATO? You know, why is Turkey in NATO? This doesn't make any sense. Uh, they don't belong in NATO. Their actions over the past three to four years uh, point to that fact that they don't belong in NATO. And um, I, I've say, stated this multiple times on my channel. Uh, there, I think there's going to be a breakdown between Turkey, uh, Turkey and NATO, and uh, they're eventually not just they're just not going to be a part of it. All right. Um, now that's something we have to continue to watch. All right. That's not something I'm saying that's going to happen in the next week or two. Uh, all I'm saying is we need to watch that situation because long term they're not going to be a member of NATO unless something drastic changes within their foreign policy. It's just not going to occur, all right? Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about uh, is the whole what's going on with India and Pakistan because there was, ve there was very, very heavy uh, fighting on the LOC. Now, this is something that's common, and we've talked about how this is common, you know? Uh, the LOC is probably the second most dangerous border in the world. So th this, this type of stuff happens all the time. The reason why we need to keep our eyes on it is because the ferocity that the uh, the fighting that occurred happened. We had we saw civilian deaths, we saw military deaths, we saw uh, fire jets on both sides scramble. All right, um, so I, I I I really think that until May we need to continue to watch this situation until until the elections in India are are over. We need to continue to watch India and Pakistan because we are one miscalculation away from a limited, at least a limit, a limited war between India and Pakistan. Okay, um, now when you're trying to look up, look up information on Twitter when it comes to India and Pakistan, you need to take everything that you hear with a grain of salt because there are a lot, a lot of people putting out uh, false information. Okay, there are some people that put out great information. Um, and uh, it's really good to see those people, but there's a lot of people who are either anti-Pakistani, anti-Indian, uh, that basically love throwing around false information, and it just spreads like wildfire, all right? Um, as we know, uh, Pakistan, another, thing, another reason why we need to keep on watching this is because Pakistan had their airspace closed for the longest time, for about a month, right? And then they reopened it. Well, now they're closing big portions of their airspace once again. And you got to ask yourself, yourself, why would they do that? You know, it doesn't really make much sense unless they are afraid that India will launch uh, another attack. And India's stated that as such, you know, their generals have come out and stated that um, they, they would strike again, but at their own time and place. So, like I said, we just need to keep our eyes on that situation. Keep our eyes on Israel and Gaza. Keep our eyes uh, on the whole Turkey-NATO relationship on Russia and China, and Venezuela, and the United States of America. A lot to keep our eyes on, guys. As more information about it comes out, I'll let you guys know. We'll talk about, we'll discuss it. Grab a beer, say a few prayers, and as always, keep your eyes to the skies. God bless.